What did that bad person do at your wedding? Story 1. My sister's wedding was a bit over the top, but beautiful. Castle, south of France, need I say more? She had this group of friend who all put some money in an envelope as a present. One girl, the new girlfriend of one of the boys, said something like, I don't have a lot to give and feel embarrassed to put my participation in front of you. So she took the envelope in the loo and added her money there, away from judging eyes. Yep, you guessed it. She took more than 500 euros from the envelope. They only find out when one of those friends asked, weeks later, if the newlyweds had enjoyed the 1,000 euros during the honeymoon. The girl's excuse was that she was planning her own wedding and could just afford a city hall affair. And it was so unfair my sister had such a great venue. I'm personally quite immune to Princess Wedding Day, but stealing money at a wedding is so, so wrong. I think the girl ended up as a bit of a castaway. My sister's marriage didn't last anyway, so I don't know what happened to her group of friends, but I often think of this girl and imagine her as one of life's constantly unhappy and envious. Story 2. My mother-in-law changed our reception venue behind my back. Luckily, I found out and was able to get it changed back. This was my first introduction to her boundary issues. I have since learned that if she thinks there is even the slightest chance that someone won't do what she wants, then she feels completely entitled to use whatever means necessary to get her way. I think she legitimately believes that people who won't do what she wants are purposely being mean to her. She also passed out dollar store glow necklaces at our reception. She didn't ask me or anything, of course. It was a complete surprise to see her handing out glow necklaces as wedding favors. Story 3. Not a bad person, a unpleasant. Little guy Big Mouth was a really close friend. Until at my wedding, he stood in front of my mom when we were cutting the cake and proceeded to give her the finger when she asked him to move over a little. Just after that, while my dad was taking photos of me and my wife cutting the cake, he keeps nudging my dad's arm so he would get a shaky photo. My dad gave him a swift elbow to say, stop, then said unpleasant stamps on my dad's foot. My dad loses it, pushes him out of the door to my father-in-law, who then pushes him further outside to his brother who is a big guy and an ex-bouncer, picks him up by the collar and slaps him around the face a couple of times and drops him on the floor. Cops were called because he wouldn't calm down and had a night in the cells. I don't speak to him anymore. If you are reading this Ricky, you are a unpleasant. Story 4. Not my wedding. I was just hotel management. Bridesmaid got so drunk she cow herself, then proceeded to walk crawl down the hallway to and from the public restroom, and then the elevator dribbling cow down her leg. Then she passed out in front of the elevator and cow some more. Story 5. She deliberately took forever to get ready and started a fight with her boyfriend, my husband's best friend and best man, right before the wedding. They showed up late because of the whole thing, which caused our whole wedding ceremony to be 20 minutes late. It is well known that she doesn't like me, so it was obviously a power play and done on purpose. She then didn't talk to me once during the entire wedding. It felt very awkward. I have one photo of me on the dance floor, and she is in the background giving me the worst stink eye. Story 6. My sister bridesmaid frowned through the whole ceremony, like a pronounced frown with the pouty bottom lip, like not subtle at all, destroyed all the pictures from the ceremony. She then got drunk, dominated every conversation. Then when one of my friends tried to change the subject, she became irate and later tried to convince me that my best friends don't really like me and had begged her to go on a group date with them. Yup until it was embarrassing. Of course, when I didn't believe this insanity, she immediately told me a completely outlandish story about being abducted by aliens, and how if I don't believe her, I'm a unpleasant because she wrote about it in her journal once, so that means there's proof. Um, I think it's official. She's lost her flipping mind. Story 7. Not mine, but my friend's brother's rather religious wedding. Bride's mother makes a speech and says, Deadpan, if you hurt her, I will slit your throat. In her speech, at the wedding where her daughter is marrying the nicest guy, Everyone was so stunned and embarrassed. No one laughed. Bride and groom could barely look at her. Story 8. At my brother's wedding, his mother-in-law sat her 11 last-minute guests at our guest's table because she clearly did not give a fudge about my family's guests. We couldn't add another table because we were at the max tables that would fit in the venue. So I had to ask the reception venue staff to add chairs to our other tables, which overcrowded our other tables and messed up, up our seating chart. His mother-in-law cuts me off saying, no, you cannot have 13 people to a table. It's unlucky. Then bad person, why did you steal our table? Huh? You flipping dumbass superstitious bad person. What the hell were we supposed to do? Ask our guests to leave? I completely ignored her, turned to the staff member, and had them add the chairs anyway. Okay, I'm done ranting. Story 9. My uncle. He made a scene about how his doctor had misdiagnosed his mental illness. He doesn't have one. He's an attention worker and claims he has every disease disorder under the sun. For years how he was going to sue them, etc. He literally stood up and made a speech about it. 
We had a very small wedding, only be about 40 guests, so it was completely inappropriate. Story 10. Ex-girlfriend, who I hadn't spoken to in four years, sent me a text message minutes before the ceremony was to start that simply said, Don't! Totally threw me. And whilst I was able to brush it aside and get on with the job at hand, I've never really forgotten it. Also, my wife's only brother, who is an attention-seeking knob, came out to her and all her friends the night before the wedding. Even though everyone knew for decades he was boy, but chose to choose that night to take the attention away from his sister, who he was insanely jealous of. Story 11. My mother, my SO and I ended up doing a courthouse-type marriage. Did the papers, found someone to marry us, went to her office to do it. The only people there were my ex-stepdad, I call him bonus dad, mom, aunt, uncle, and grandmother. My mom was my maid of honor, bonus dad was my SO's best man. Right in the middle of our vows, my mom breaks down, sobbing, interrupting everything. The bad person is obviously trying to get the attention on her, since she can't seem to stand not being the middle of everything. We try to continue over her sobbing, but only starts crying louder. My aunt, being the amazing person she is, grabbed the ring from my mom, pushed her towards my uncle, who pretty much dragged her outside. Aunt quickly announced she's the maid of honor now, which I was completely fine with, and the vows carried on. After signing everything, we go out to get to the car, and my mom is just furious at me for letting your aunt do that. I just ignored her and went to the car. On the upside, when we were saying our vows, bonus dad started tearing up. It made me happy because it was super unlike him. Kind of guy who never says, I love you, because that's just him. Ex-first sergeant, served from 1972 to 2007 manly man. I love you, bonus dad. Fudge you, mom. Story 12. I get angry just thinking about this. It was my husband's best friend's mom, who was not invited, but showed up anyway, and brought a bunch of small children with her. It was explicitly a no kids, no exceptions wedding. Tried to sit at the same table as me, and tried to take pictures of me while I was eating and loudly criticized one of the caterers because she thought she saw him put a used spoon into a buffet. He didn't. My mom, who is pretty blunt, straight up asked her, Who are you and why are you here? I personally addressed all the invitations and I know we didn't invite you. To which she replied, Well, my son needed a ride. My mom told her to leave, which was so unbelievably awkward, but she left without making more of a scene. Story 13. At my mom's best friend's wedding, a young lady decided to wear a white floor-length dress and kept asking the DJ to play all these line dancing songs that only she knew the moves to. I think the groom was more pissed than the bride. So part two of my wedding gift to them was to casually drag her off the dance floor and talk to the DJ about reading the room when it came to requests. Story 14. After the ceremony, we were taking group pics with both families. After a couple of pictures, my mother-in-law starts walking around loudly proclaiming, Can we get a picture with just the close family, please? My husband and I were like, sure. But then she kept saying it over and over again. Until finally, I realized she wanted a pic without me in it, but was just being passive-aggressive about it. So finally, I'm like, do you want me to move? And she's like, yeah, that would be great. I've been meaning to get some family pics done, and this is the perfect location. Continues to get a million pics of her. She's my husband's stepmom. Her kids and their families and my husband and his brothers, while I'm just standing off to the side awkwardly. Then, come Christmas, she has the audacity to send my parents a Christmas card using one of the pics of just them from the wedding with a little from our family to yours line. This on top of the million other things she's done to be awful. I cannot stand this woman. Story 15. She got super drunk, gave a speech during the ceremony where she was apparently channeling my dead mom, whom she had never even met, saying how proud my mom was of me. Then later, during the actual reserved time for speeches, she again, uninvited, shared the story of when I met my husband, and how I actually wasn't interested in him BC, I was trying to fudge his friend at the time. She didn't say trying to fudge, but she may as well have. It's totally true, but did she have to announce it to my entire group of wedding guests? What a nightmare. We are not friends anymore. Story 16. Maid of honor at my wedding. The ceremony went off without any problems, and she was actually a huge help with setting everything up and organizing most of the day. During the cocktail hour afterwards, she gets absolutely smashed, and then punches her boyfriend in the face then somehow convinces him he has been kicked out and has to leave. I spoke to the owner and the bartenders and told them not to serve her any more alcohol at this point, but they didn't think it was an issue yet. As soon as her boyfriend is out of the parking lot, she drags one of my groomsmen to bathroom and gives his skin flute a thorough cleaning. Manages to get more drunk because she was tipping the bartender a lot. She then stumbles onto dance floor during my wife's dance with her father. I manage to stop her before any real interruption happens to the dance. But she then tries to kiss me in front of everyone. I kind of push drop her, and she hits the floor like I've out both her kneecaps and starts crying hysterically. 
My mother-in-law runs over and drags this stupid bad person out of the reception hall, all the while she is shrieking like a banshee because I threw her to the ground. Everything is good for around two hours, while the trash bin of honor is nowhere to be seen, until the owner of the golf course taps me on the shoulder and asks to speak to me outside in private. I go outside and see her boyfriend has returned, who I didn't mind seeing there because I actually liked him, but his face is panicked and he just starts apologizing for something. I was pretty drunk, so it took me a few seconds to realize the tire marks all over the ninth green leading up to the golf cart, about 90% submerged in the pond right beside the green. Wasn't too concerned about her dumb peach, but unfortunately, she was still alive and thrashing around trying to get out of the pond. I just laughed and told the owner I wasn't paying a single cent for any damages. I told them to stop serving her hours previous and to call the police and have her charged for destroying the green and driving the cart into the pond. Surprisingly, he was very understanding of my point of view, and we worked together to get everything sorted out. She ended up owing him just over 15 grand, eight or nine for the cart, and the rest was to fix the green and lost wages for him not being able to offer people a full 18 holes of golf. Her parents just paid for all of it, and she is currently on a soul-searching adventure in Asia. Despite all this, my wedding was still the most amazing day of my life, and my wife actually thought most of what happened was pretty funny in a Jerry Springer dumpster donkey kind of way. I'm just glad my wife's day wasn't ruined by it and my best friend, who she blew, has one hell of a story for all of his friends about my wedding. Story 17. The day before my wedding, my husband's female roommate texted him saying she didn't think she could come to the wedding because she'd be in such emotional pain and would miss him so much. Instead, she said she'd be sitting at home watching rom-coms and eating Banamp Jerry's. I kid you not, she had liked him for two years. He had assumed she would respect reasonable boundaries like I have a girlfriend and am not interested. Do not passive-aggressively confess to your crush the day before they get married. Story 18. Skipped my bridal shower and bachelorette party, but found time to go, uninvited, to the strip club with my husband, his friends, and her boyfriend, who was a groomsman. Came to my wedding dressed as a hooker and congratulated me by saying she thought it would be her getting married first. We're obviously not friends anymore, and these aren't even the main reasons for that. Story 19. Well, I don't want to call my mom a bad person, but it fits the category. My wife and I told her she could wear any color dress she wanted except navy blue, as that was the bridal party color. What color dress does she wear? Navy blue. Also, I have a suspicion that my two cousins that were there that were not invited by me were invited by my mom. Story 20. I have a couple, unfortunately. My first marriage didn't go very well. At the wedding, I had a rented tux on, and I asked my new wife not to smear cake on me when we the cake because of that. Of course, when the time came, it wasn't just a cute smear of frosting or something like you'd see at most weddings. Oh no. She full-on plastered me with cake and, and a mess of frosting and food coloring. I don't know what was worse, being angry and hurt and embarrassed when the whole room was watching or when people were pulling me aside later and apologizing for it when her and her parents were still laughing and making jokes about it a couple of hours later. I thankfully remarried a great person years later and we had a small ceremony that was really very nice. Our photographer was taking pictures afterward before we were heading to the reception, and I had been talking to my dad when he started, so we just took our picture together first. My mom, being who she is, was incensed by not being first to get her picture taken when she wanted and proceeded to throw a fit and leave. My parents had been divorced for at least a decade or so prior to this. Maybe a couple of minutes later, we were all lining up and getting family together for pictures, and when I couldn't find my mom, I learned that she'd stormed off and left. On what would otherwise be one of the best days of my life, there'll always be that storm cloud of pettiness that she left behind because she couldn't handle putting one of her kids ahead of herself for 10 minutes worth of time. Story 21. Everyone was the bad person. I had a destination wedding and paid for people to come. People only stayed about an hour at our reception and took off to do tourist stuff. My husband and I spent the majority of our reception alone. We paid out a lot of money to make sure people had fun and they all left. 10 years later and it still pisses me off. Edit. It was a small wedding, and it did not, not sure prices now, cost that much to fly to this destination. It was on a beach at a resort. Story 22. I love my aunt, but she scrapped our planned DJ for a live band without telling us. Needless to say, a Sky Nerd cover band was not what I had in mind for my wedding, and I love me some Sky Nerd. We gave them a CD with our song on it. After a few minutes and then realizing they didn't have the equipment to play our song, they just started playing something random. I still have no flipping clue what song we shared our first dance as a married couple to. Edit Skynerd. Story 23. Jesus Christ, my fiancé and I are planning our wedding now, and reading this is giving me nightmares. Her family is torn right down the middle from an altercation that involved her brother and jail time. 
Half the family doesn't talk to the other now. Her brother is going to be there. That's not under discussion or debate, and she's made that very clear to the families. I'm afraid of what kind of crazy and dirty cow that could go down all because she wanted her brother in her life. I am considering security at my wedding. Story 24. Bridesmaid. I had only a glimpse of her crazy prior to this. Frequent emotional meltdowns throughout the day. Disappear to cry for a while. Sucker another bridesmaid to comfort her and carry on like nothing without identifying a source of discontent. Yelled at the nicest woman in the building, not even in wedding party, just being helpful. And stormed off swearing when her decorations weren't perfect. Left saying, I can't do this. And drove away in a fit with flowers for the reception in her car. Eventually showing up late, adding flowers to tables, acting like nothing happened. Bridesmaids were excellent buffers the whole time, and it later came out she was jealous of me getting married. To a man, and not her. Story 25. Wore the same color dress as the bridesmaids, even though she was expressly told not to. And her dress was real loose on the top, so her ball kept falling out. Walked around taking pictures during the ceremony with a stupid little point and camera. She's in the background of literally over half of our wedding pictures. It was almost 10 years ago, and I'm getting pissed off all over again thinking about it. Story 26. By the time of our wedding, my husband's 33-year-old sister was still single, and she hated that her younger brother was getting married first. How did she deal with it? By trying to sabotage my wedding. The night before our wedding, she got, and while ugly crying, told my husband that it was supposed to be her wedding, and it wasn't fair because she'd be able to plan a much better wedding than ours. That would eventually prove to be false, as she finally got her on-again, off-again boyfriend to propose, by giving him an ultimatum. We had a small, elegant outdoor wedding at a mountain lodge, and my Sayel convinced some family members on my husband's side that the dress code was casual, so they showed up in jeans, t-shirts, and hoodies. I was beyond upset with them for readily taking my SIL's word without double-checking with us. Luckily, my photographer was sensible enough to exclude them from the pictures as much as possible. At our reception, she went around complaining to our guests about how cheap our wedding was. My husband's side is used to those typical church and banquet hall weddings, and ours was way different. But still, it's rude to cow all over someone else's wedding at their wedding. The lodge had a hot tub on the property, and near the end of the night when people were starting to leave, she changed into her bathing suit and chilled in the hot tub. This was planned ahead of time because she thought to bring her bathing suit there. My husband and I don't really talk to her anymore. Story 27. Oh my god, I have three different ones. Tell me which is the worst. My mother refused to wear the color that I asked her to wear, which my mother-in-law and all my bridesmaids wore, and which matched my table deck. Instead, she wore a sparkly silver sequined gown, which had the express purpose of upstaging the bride. Me. Then my sister-in-law threw a hissy fit, because when we went into a small room with the rabbi for a blessing, only the wedding party was allowed to come. It was supposed to be intimate and a small, hence the small room. Since sister-in-law couldn't come, she didn't let her husband, who was a groomsman, my husband's brother, come either and made a big noisy stink about it. Third, my husband's cousin somehow got the band to honor her for her birthday with a long speech and a special dance for her and her husband, even though it was also my cousin's birthday and was also my best friend's anniversary and it was my flipping wedding, not her birthday party. Overall, my wedding was magnificent, but they were definitely three complainers there. Story 28. My sister's wedding. Our relatives on my father's side are not the greatest, just not really respectable people. They are on the poorer side, which isn't a problem, but their attitude is. They think the world owes them something. My parents both grew up in poorer families, but worked really hard and became pretty successful. Because of this, my sister and I constantly got comments from our cousins that were just straight poor, constantly making us feel bad for being better off. To combat this, kids were not allowed, only aunts and uncles. It bummed us out because one family on my dad's side is actually awesome, but the rule stood because of the poor ones. So, of course, the worst of all our aunts brings her flipping kids. Her two daughters share her bratty entitlement. It was awful and now caused a rift with the family we like because their kids weren't welcome, but they are. Another poor aunt tried to make the entire event about her. She was pissed that the guests of honor were my parents' best friends and not family. My grandmother introduced the best friends to everyone, and when it got to that aunt, she stuck her nose up, turned around, and walked away. The best friends cracked a joke as she walked away, and everyone was laughing at her which was nice. Well, I have three poor aunts, and they basically tried to destroy the evening. Now my family makes themselves busy during holidays. My sister lives in another state. My parents leave a few days before Thanksgiving to go to their summer home and don't return until after New Year's. That leaves me alone to make excuses why I am not attending their holiday parties. Story 29. My sister's wedding. The groom's grandma and female cousins, parents are deceased, 
wiped their feet on my sister's dress train during pictures, then stole all the bottles of wine that had the labels customized to read the wedding vows of the groom's parents, then proceeded to bring back hard liquor, do shots, and grind on the DJ while he was playing bass booming hip-hop that my sister and her husband explicitly said they didn't want. After those shenanigans, they also threatened to physically assault my sister and my mother. Edit. My sister didn't confront them because she didn't want to give them the pleasure of seeing her hurt or angry on her wedding day. The groom is no contact with his cousins and low contact with his grandparents. My sister hasn't seen any of them since the wedding. The grandma wasn't doing any grinding, but the groom found out later that she orchestrated the whole thieving of the wine bottles, which occurred while my mom and sister stepped away after the ceremony because the woman who was going to perform was dying in hospice and we needed to say goodbye. My sister is white, my BL is, and I don't think his family is. I just don't think they liked my sister. Story 30. Didn't show up. We had set up the tables so that we had an even amount on both sides of the dance floor, and this one family who RSV ped no. Let's my in-laws know about two weeks before the wedding. That, oh, we can come now, is that okay? My in-laws said, sure. This made my wife insane. We had to redo the seating for her whole side of the family, add a table, and rearrange everything. Well, the day comes and they don't show up, Send no gift and never mention it. Story 31. We had a very small ceremony and a very intimate wedding dinner with our family. My one of my closest friends invited herself. I should have said no, but I felt bad. Plus, I had just recently told her she wasn't going to be the maid of honor at my wedding reception, which was a couple months away. So I thought maybe this would make up for it. One extra person wouldn't hurt, would it? Biggest flipping mistake. We had a long day and she started drinking early and could not control her alcohol. I had asked her to keep my parents company since they're here from a different country and they don't speak a lot of English. All she focused on was the many bottles of wine. By the time we sat down for dinner, she was slurring. In the middle of dinner, everybody was enjoying themselves. She told my husband that he's taking me away from her and that she's mad at him because of it. We laughed it off and I asked the server to limit her wine. A little later, she stared at my parents who were having a good time, leaned over to me and asked, is your dad still cheating on your mom? Note, my parents went through a rough patch a couple years back and my mom insisted that my dad was not being honest with her. There was no proof and to say my mom is dramatic is an understatement. They got over it and still together now. Nevertheless, that period of time was very difficult for me. When she asked me that question, I just stared at her blankly. Part of me was so embarrassed and worried that someone else may have heard what she said. But more so it just brought back bad memories about my parents' marriage on my own wedding. It literally ruined my mood. I was horrified. I straight out told her that it was inappropriate to mention that. She was embarrassed, so she kept drinking more and more. She then started to call her boyfriend to come pick her up. He immediately got annoyed at her because she has been drinking so much into the sky up on her. She proceeded to call him 38 times, eventually sitting at the table crying on the phone while both my families sat there awkwardly not knowing what to do. Eventually, her BF agreed to come get her. I had to gather her stuff and walk her out. She did not say bye or thank you to anyone. The cherry on top was that she realized how stupid she was and called me 10 times that night to try to talk to me. On my wedding night! Story 32. That bad person didn't come. My mother-in-law was upset that my parents renewed their vows during our reception. We were married on my parents' 40th anniversary. They were poor and went to the justice of the peace. Never had anything formal. Never even had a formal picture taken in 40 years. My mom passed away last year, so giving her the chance to feel like a bride even if it was several decades after she was married, is something I will be proud of and happy about forever. Story 33. One of my husband's old friends was a bridesmaid. We were super laid-back bridesmaids, didn't have to buy dresses, nothing was mandatory to attend, etc. This woman would message me nonstop about her problems. We can't make it to underscore, underscore, underscore. We had to borrow clothes for the wedding. We don't have a ride, can your fiancé pick us up, etc. I was cool about everything. Come to what you can. Yes, we'll make sure you have a ride. Wear what you have. It's not a big deal. But to her, everything was a big deal. And I spent more time dealing with her drama than my own things that needed to be done. After the wedding, she turned the crazy up to 11 and started picking fights on social media. I very quietly removed offending posts and limited my posts that she could view without unfriending her. She flipped out. I said that I would like for us to remain civil for the sake of my husband, who was a friend of hers, but requested that she stop involving him in our arguments and that we limit our interactions on social media. Then I was bombarded with things like, well, at your wedding, your friend said I didn't get pretty flowers in my bouquet just because I didn't show up to your stuff. She then posted screenshots of our private messages, like a 12-year-old. Luckily, she came off looking worse. My husband told her that she needed to act like an adult, and we off contact when she failed to do so. Some people are just nutty. Story 34. 
Not my wedding, but my brother-in-law's. Biel and his wife were the first of three siblings to marry. Emmael insisted and got her way on the following. One, Biel and his wife hire an aunt with a really good camera to take the wedding photos. She showed up with a point and... I am a professional photographer, with the core of my business being weddings. At M.I.L.'s insistence, I was not allowed to attend anything but the ceremony and reception. 2. B.L. and his wife weren't allowed to have any alcohol or dancing because those things make people sinful. Everything was done by 6 p.m. When my husband and I got married, we did everything how we wanted and didn't care what M.I.L. said. Professional photographer, drink tickets, a dance, etc. The evening went without incident. Coincidentally, or maybe not, M.I.L. divorced about 1.5 years later to marry a man she was having an affair with. He turned out to be a convicted child molester. M.I.L. told us, it's just a sin, and made all sorts of justifications when we confronted her about her deception, dishonesty, and apparent disregard for the safety of her grandchildren. No one in the family talks to M.I.L. anymore. Story 35, Maid of Honor. She was great leading up to the wedding, very helpful, and liked being involved in the planning. But when the big day came, she became a whole other beast, scowled the entire ceremony, started telling other members of the wedding party that the bride slapped her across the face. She didn't. She terminated a mosquito on the maid of honor's back. Then she complained that she wasn't in enough of the photos. Finally, at the reception, she continued spreading lies to the mother of the bride and the wedding party and anyone else who would give her attention. The mother of the bride was gullible and believed it all. This led to the bride being berated by her mother and the wedding party for things she didn't do, inside the women's restroom where nobody else could get to her. Not even the groom. The bride cried the entire night of the wedding. And the next day, the maid of honor emailed the groom with a list of reasons why the bride was a horrible person. Story 36. This is a two-parter. My grandmother made my sister late to her reception. Wanted to give her a large check as a gift, but insisted that her, my, sorry but spineless, grandpa give her that gift in private. Everyone left the house for the venue, and an hour later, my sister arrives. Apparently, my grandmother essentially held her hostage with the oh no thing, and only gave it over after giving her a huge lecture and saying a bunch of, sadly typical, poisonous things. The start of my sister's reception was no bride, and then an upset bride putting on a strong show for people. I know her well enough to know it when I see it. The next part is worse. My great-grandmother didn't show up to the wedding or reception. That stung. As you might imagine, she only lived around an hour away. But my grandmother had mentioned that my GG didn't want to make the trip. We found out later that this was because my grandmother told her own mom that my sister didn't care if she made the trip or not. So she stayed home for her uncaring great-granddaughter's wedding. Hurt all around. Not even the worst cow my grandmother's done in the last 15 years. I want to love her. But I'm of the belief that the world will be a better place when she's not in it anymore. She's too consistently toxic to anyone naive enough to let her close, and it makes me more sad than angry these days. Story 37. Came up to me at the reception and said, OMG, wow, your dress is stunning. I mean, my wedding dress is my favorite wedding dress, of course, and is way prettier than anyone else's, as she looked me up and down. But I actually like yours. The emphasis on the actually sounded like she was surprised I could look good in a dress. Bad person. Story 38. In this case, I was that bad person. At my friend's wedding, they had a bench for people to sign and wrote well wishes on. On the underside, I wrote, If you can read this, you two must be in a terrible fight. Now kiss and make up, drunk me, and sober me too. Thought it was funny, since it's not obvious. The happy couple did not find it funny. Oops. Story 39. Not my wedding, but a close friend's. She had six bridesmaids, two were pains in the peach. One called her constantly leading up to the wedding to cry about how she was single and to beg the bride to invite more single guys that she knew. Other one put up a stink about not wanting to wear the jewelry the parents of the bride bought for everyone, then refused to wear the same color nail polish as the other bridesmaids. This wasn't the bride's request, but a suggestion from the other bridesmaids. The bride knew she wasn't as close to all of us and offered to seat her at a different table with people she knew better. She chose to sit with us, then complained that we drank three bottles of wine between ten people, yelled at the bride because she had a personalized thank you to every member of the wedding party, Gave a stink eye all night, then left minutes into the reception without saying bye to anyone, including the bride and groom. Story 40. Bridesmaids spent the morning telling my wife it was pouring. The aisle of our outdoor wedding was a trough of mud, and her gown was surely going to be ruined before she got up the aisle. Bridesmaid went into damage control mode and gave bridesmaids stupid tasks to do to keep her away from the wife while preparations finished. Turns out the rain cleared out in plenty of time for the lawn to dry. And all we had to do about the middle aisle was move where the seats were set to the opposite side of the oak we were wed under. Story 41. Not my wedding. It was my ex-brother-in-law's. 
His mother claimed to be a self-employed caterer, and while she had worked in the industry in the past, she had no actual business to speak of at the time. She just had a normal domestic kitchen with no facilities to prepare or store large amounts of food and a rather cavalier attitude to cleanliness. She already had a very dodgy track record with her previous attempts. After insisting on catering for my ex-21 Asen, she had given a couple of people food poisoning and delivered a quiche with mold growing on its base. She insisted on catering her son's wedding, but he was refusing. He knew that she couldn't possibly do a proper job of it, and besides, he wanted his mother at his wedding as a guest and not as paid help, so she was told that a professional caterer was going to be employed. On the big day, everything was going well, and while the caterer was setting up for the evening party, the mother accosted me and asked me and my ex to run her home in my car. When we got there, she had prepared a whole load of food which she wanted to take to the party. Despite my protestations, she insisted, so we loaded up a huge candy of curry, a gigantic trifle, and about half a dozen other plates of random food. When we got back to the venue, she asked us to unload it all and add it to the paid catering. I managed to grab the groom before we took anything in, and he flipped. Apparently, he and his bride had already had a big argument with her and insisted that they were not serving curry at their wedding. Whoever made it, he sent my ex inside to keep his mother busy while we hauled the curry across to the other side of the car park and poured it down a storm drain before throwing the candy in a builder's skip. We attracted the attention of a group of teenagers that were hanging around on the car park and he handed them the huge trifle and told them to get rid of it for him. All of the smaller dishes ended up going inside, including a rather odd-looking cake with bright green icing. She didn't notice that the curry and trifle were missing until it was time to eat. We all pleaded ignorance and suggested that the real caterers had removed them or someone had stolen them. When we left for the evening, several of the cars in the venue windows were smeared with trifle, courtesy of the gang of teens, so we put the blame on them for sneaking in and stealing the food. Everybody who ate the weird-looking green cake got food poisoning. Story 42. Friend's wedding two years ago. Outdoor wedding. The groom's mom is overbearing, to say the least. She's the mom who comments on every single one of your Facebook posts. The mom who texts you at all hours for the simplest of things. She just would never shut the hell up. When it came time to give the speeches, she wasn't asked to give one on purpose. What does she do? Grabs the mic out of the father of the groom's hand and gives a 15-minute speech. The highlights of the speech were, she wants a grandchild by the end of the year. She is so proud that they allowed her to live with them when they buy their house. News to everyone at the wedding. She calls the father of the groom alluring cute. She pretended to fall three separate times during the reception and screamed like she was being stabbed. The best part? She was in every single picture taken at this wedding, even the bride and grooms. Not a single picture was taken without her in front of it. Overbearing to the max, 010 would not recommend. Story 43. That bad person was my sister. She was going through a separation from her husband and was miserable, so of course had to be miserable. She complained about the venue, complained about the dresses. I let all my girls pick out their dresses as long as they were so they would reuse them. Complained about the food. I made sure there was vegan food for her. However, to top it off, she took two morphine during hair and makeup so that when we were doing the processional, the best man had to help her walk and stay upright. I should add that she has had chronic, lifelong pain issues and has somewhat of a tolerance. Edit, I forgot. And in talking with my husband last night about our wedding, I remembered that she also told the hair and makeup girls to go easy. I don't want to look like Choo Choo the Chinese work. One of the girls was Asian. I was mortified and tipped them probably far more than I should have. Story 44. My husband's childhood friend, this skanky girl that always wanted him, but he never liked her, showed up in a dress that was down to her ankles, but had a slit on both sides up to her waist. Yeah, her waist. Then she proceeded to bad person dance on the dance floor and do all sorts of moves and everyone could see. Story 45. Told me a week before that she wouldn't be coming because she was upset that I was getting married first and didn't think she could handle it. She was my oldest friend, bridesmaid, and I'd paid for her dress. And obviously her food, etc. By then too. She was single at the time, and my now husband and I had been together for six years when we got married. It was hardly a surprise that we were getting married first. She used to ring me while I was engaged and cry and tell me she wished I wasn't getting married. One day we went to a wedding fair with my other two bridesmaids as well, and on the way there, she told me she didn't want to talk about my wedding today. Unfortunately, there was talk about my wedding that day. We're no longer in touch. Turns out weddings can make long-time friends hate you. Story 46. Best man. Left during pictures to get his girlfriend, forgot my ring in his car, ran to get it right before I walked down the aisle, and made up his speech on the spot after we told him with plenty of time he needed one. I felt so bad for my husband. My sister wrote this amazing speech, and then his best man just sounded like a total idiot giving his speech after her. I was not amused. Story 47. 
My mother got drunk, had a fight with my wife, and then proceeded to go and fall down some stairs blaming it on everyone but herself. My wedding day had an intermission filled with an ambulance coming to pick her up, and it is a major part of what I remember about that day. That was 17 years ago, and since that end we have her out of our lives and no longer have the constant drama she causes either. Story 48. Till I had a pretty nice wedding. Only two things kind of went wrong. One of my wife's friends is in a wheelchair and had a new fella in the army. He stood her up on the dance floor for a dance and everyone was breathtaking at how special it was. He then proceeded to get super drunk and get glitter all over his uniform. He was wearing his army dress clothes. I think he had cleared that beforehand. Then, my dad, who is in the Air Force, proceeded to inform him that his superiors weren't going to be too happy that he had glitter all over his uniform. He spent the rest of the night drunkenly asking people if they could help him remove the glitter. That wasn't a bad person move. It was actually really funny to watch it unfold. The other thing, we hired a band. The lead duo were in a relationship. Apparently, they had broken up that day. Cow was intense. When the guy went to pack up his stuff, he had a massive amp in the boot of his car. He shut the boot door and the amp protruded through and shattered the window. He started crying. Cal was also intense. I told him to go early. He actually offered my money back. I told him to keep it as he was going to need it. We had a great DJ who made the rest of the reception amazing. Story 49. That bad person was my mother at my brother's wedding. There was not enough chairs at the table my grandparents and aunts, her parents and siblings, were sitting at. Grandpa says pull up a chair and join us. Aunt finds her in the bathroom crying shortly after about how mean my grandpa was for not letting her sit at the table with them. Also went out her car several times to try and show how excluded she was from the group. Had so many relatives come up to me saying, you'll never guess what your mom is doing. Please, I know she was trying to make it all about her. Basically tried to make everyone pay attention to her instead of my brother the whole reception. I personally choose to go no contact with her prior to this. Obviously didn't invite her to my wedding a year later with zero remorse. Story 50. Not my wedding, but I was best man at my close friend's wedding. I'm from a small town where everybody knows everybody. My ex was there because she was part of the same friend group as the bride, groom, and myself. We dated in high school first year off college. When I broke it off, she did not take it well at all. Never spoke to her or saw her again except for my occasional trips home from college. Fast forward five years to the wedding reception. I had brought my fiancé, which at the time we had been dating four years. My ex got unbelievably drunk. She made out with anything she could get her hands on. She was obviously trying to send me a message. On more than one occasion, I would be talking to a friend who she would grab from behind, drag them off 15 feet, and stick her tongue down their throat. At this point, she was slurring her words and stubbing. My parents were also at the wedding. When I started talking to my dad, she came up from behind as before to drag off the person I was talking to. Not realizing it was my dad, she spun him around and got halfway to his face with kissing lips before she got the deer in the headlights look. I cackled. Later in the night on the dance floor, she punched my mother in the stomach. She did this without warning and without my mother even seeing it coming. After that, she was removed from the wedding, and I heard she ended up puking outside. Edit. Spelling. Story 51. I wasn't the one getting married here, but a cousin of mine got married to a woman who is part of a very culturally insular Argentinian family. The bride and groom always seemed really happy together, though, so it all was fine. At the reception, after everyone's been drinking a lot, one of the bride's very, very drunk sisters makes a speech. She brings out some paper and unfolds it downwards to open it up, then unfolds sideways and upwards, revealing it to be a large, wrinkled sheet. It was like a gag from a comedy movie, which we all seem to expect it to be in its intentions. But no! She then rambles for about 15 minutes, even with her eyes pouring over prepared notes in front of her, about how she didn't like the groom when she first met him, how she was pretty sure the parents didn't like him either. She switches between crying her eyes out and not crying at all multiple times, as she unveils this story about the married couple meeting in a nightclub as teens. How they'd become a couple until the groom realized his now bride had been underage, so he called it off. How they'd met years later when she was legal. How much they fought and broke up with each other often, one as recently as months before the wedding. How she, the sister, now loved that they had a baby on the way, and that she's proud of her sister being a mother. I mean, the whole thing was like something from a Vince Vaughn movie. In any other context, Everything she said would have sounded like a speech she was giving to Oh No Them both publicly, but she said it all just as a mix of pride as a sister and stream of consciousness. The entire occasion went from run-of-the-mill to awkward as fudge with that one event. Story 52. Apparently it was me. My SO at the time was in the wedding party. The bride was his sister. We all had mutual friends, so I was seated with them. At the reception over dinner, one of our friends decides it's a great time to show me pictures of my SO cheating on me and proof the bride encouraged it. I told everyone at the table that I was not feeling well, got up and quietly left. One of the other friends came with me. 
Well, all anyone talked about after that was how I made it about me and had to drag someone else into it, the friend that left, and how upset my by now X so was. As I mentioned, I left quietly. The only reason everyone was talking about it wad because the bride started shrieking about it, you anyone who would listen. Story 53. I have a big family. So the wedding invitation list just got reused over and over. Ex-girlfriend kind of insinuated herself into the family when we were dating, going as far as to stick pictures of herself in our photo albums, to the point that after we broke up, no one removed her from the list, assuming someone else wanted her there. She actually showed up at my wedding in a white dress. Not a wedding dress, but still. It was only in conversations afterward did we all realize that no one actually wanted her at the last few weddings she was invited to. Story 54. Had a very small wedding, just a few friends and a few family members. I picked my best friend of 15 years to be one witness and let my husband pick the other one who was his long-term friend. Another friend who was at the wedding started complaining in the middle of the ceremony that she hadn't been picked to be a witness. I'd only known her a year or so. I couldn't believe it. She actually said to the registrar that she wanted to do it too. So yeah, I now have three witnesses on my wedding certificate and nobody speaks to that bad person anymore. Story 55. Sorry on my phone. Got married pretty quickly after getting engaged like 11 weeks, if I remember exactly. So told my parents what was happening and when that day so basically three months beforehand, to which my dad refused to take the time off. My mom came to the ceremony but refused to come to the reception, but instead drove my in-laws up to the reception all the while, telling them how much of a banana and bustard I am. Well, my mother-in-law came back into the reception, walked straight up to me and said sorry, gave me a cuddle. I've now been married for 10 years and have a new mom, who I wouldn't change for the world. Story 56. She forgot that we made an appointment with her husband to officiate our wedding. I was married at the house of the same man who had married my parents 30 years ago. It was my dad's greatest wish. He got all misty-eyed just talking about it. When I mentioned we were planning on a courthouse wedding, he was just so crestfallen. My doubts were confirmed when we arrived at the old guy's house. It was 2 p.m. and everyone was asleep. His wife was clearly distraught. She should have just told us that her husband couldn't officiate when we called to make the appointment. Turns out he was dying of cancer. Dude couldn't even remember vows. Kept drifting off into silence. I cried the whole time. 